Welcome to the Paradox of Life, the podcast where we ask the questions no one dares to ask. But everyone wants to know. We will open Pandora's box to show you a world where anything is possible. What you do with it is a choice we leave to you. We are your hosts, Monique and Colin. Welcome to the Paradox of Life. The law of cause and effect. Newton has a law, the law of motion, and that law states that every action creates an opposite or equal reaction. So that as we do something in the physical world, it has an effect. If we push something, it moves. And it follows, therefore, that these physical movements, actions, and reactions happen across all planes of existence. And if we acknowledge that there is both a physical and non-physical realm of our existence, that law of cause and effect becomes a superpower for you when you understand how to manipulate and appreciate that for everything that you do, things come back. So law of cause and effect, this is a, this is one of those ones that on the surface feels really simple, Monique, but it has yeah. such depth to it, doesn't it? Such depth to the understanding and the application. I'm excited to play with this one. Me too. And I'm just actually looking up the card because that's a really, really interesting one. Um, and I think we didn't have this one before. This one is the seven of wands. And you can see a deer. Is it a deer or is it a... Yeah, it looks like a, a deer, like a stag. Oh, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a deer, actually. Um, deer with antlers. She's wearing like a, it's a 60s outfit in like a polka dot uh, dress with a denim blouse and a head scarf. And so there are six wands pointing at her and she has one in her hands and uh basically close to her body and one hand is open and basically looks like uh she's holding it up like kind of like a stop motion right mm -hmm. and in this deck it basically means to be a few steps ahead of others um to defend your ideas or your posi uh, your position and aligning your actions with integrity and to trust in your spiritual truth when i look at this though it's interesting because when we talk about cause and effect and i look at the card it feels like that something is coming at something is coming at us the ones are coming at us right and she's trying to redirect it back. Um, it's almost that what she's been sending out is coming back at her. And I think that's kind of what the law of cause, of, um, cause and effect is. Mm. And because if we look at the energetics behind it, it means that whatever energy we put out into this world is somewhat going to come back at us and it doesn't have to be in the same situation but it's basically what goes around comes around right and it's going to be like a um boomerang and the boomerang is not going to come back from the same direction it can come back from a very different direction i don't know if you've seen the videos from people who've uh thrown boomerangs for the first few times and they hit them at the back of the head mm. <laughs> because with how much force they've been throwing them it, and they, they didn't know they yeah. yeah and it literally comes around and it hits you hard if you don't know yeah and it's so interesting that... sorry mm -hmm. you finish finish your point it's all good no uh when i look at the card it kind of feels a little bit that she's trying to reject what she's getting back right and mm. the vans uh as a suit is really our spirituality, our um, energetics, our like everything about basically what's around us and what we're, yeah, kind of putting out in the world. So I feel like that's actually a very accurate card. Um, and I think what was in the description aligning with our integrity, the more we are in integrity, the less we need to be afraid of the ripple effect of how we show up in the world. 
Yes. And you mentioned something. Inter- so it's interesting how she's doing this and like mm-hmm. stopping the effect coming back. Because one thing that came up for me as you were sharing there, especially about the boomerang, we often put something in front of us and expect it to come directly back, don't we? Mm. Whether it's putting some content out onto social media, creating a, a course or a program or whatever it, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. You can put it into any context. We do something and we expect it to come back. We expect it to be linear and mm-hmm. it's just not. It's it's circular. It's It's moving. It's fluid, as we know. And the boomerang's beautiful, isn't it? Because it really does hit you in the back of the head and you're just not aware of it. So those things are, are coming back in your life that you've put out, but you're, you've got your hand up and not accepting it because you're expecting it to come from the front. And actually it's coming around the side or it's happening in somebody else's interaction with you in their, in their life. And it's not, it's not that it's just not the way that we expect it. And I think that yeah. for me is the the thing that trips most of us up most yeah. of the time is that we like yeah. you know we do i have this thing that i'll share with my clients and i'm like we're looking at the sun here and we're going we're like literally shaking our fist at the sun like why aren't you the moon why you know why aren't you the moon it's like it's the sun like it is what it you're causing this chaos because you're holding your hand up and not accepting for the way things are and this is another one of those great examples i think isn't it that if we can just be open to that boomerang coming back in different ways other than what we expect that that's the power isn't it yeah absolutely and maybe that's why it's not a lot of sunny days in uh great britain because a lot of british people <laughs> complain waving, as waving our fist at the clouds yeah why is it cloudy <laughs> like, today <laughs> it's like the sun is out like for 10 minutes and everyone is like it's so hot today oh my goodness <laughs> maybe that's why there's no sun i'm a little bit kidding (laughs) (laughs) Uh, no but i really i really appreciate what you mean because um also on the cart you can see how she's holding on to this one thing but if mm. you hold on to um your own energies or you're not free to give everything that you have i think you also can't receive back so i think it's like a two uh, oh yeah i love that point. i love that we're holding on and not putting the energy out we're yeah. holding on and not putting the energy out and we're also stopping and blocking the energy yeah. coming back that's uh-huh. powerful isn't it now there's two elements to that isn't there yeah there's what we're doing internally in from both angles like refusing to accept the energy back yeah. and refusing to let it go in the first place as well and then that by itself creates a ripple effect Because if we basically are scarce with our energy and we refuse to give it, but then we refuse to take what's coming back or or we refuse to see all of the opportunities and abundance around us, basically that creates so much scarcity that that's what we're going to get back in our life. Mm. So I think that's a ripple effect that we would create with that um, attitude as well. Yep. And wouldn't it be interesting if we were to look each of us at, what it means to let go of that wand completely, let it drop, let it create that ripple effect. I love the, I'm a big, I'm the master of letting go, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, I I love, um, I'm a big Bruce Lee fan, right? Being a martial artist. And I love the thing he says, where if you drop a pebble into a pond, it makes ripples and soon the ripples will cover the whole pond. And it's like mm-hmm. this this ripple effect. This is yep. kind of what we're talking about here, isn't it? Energetically. Yeah. Imagine if we could just let that let that pebble or that wand drop without having to cling to it. Imagine who we who we would be if we were able to do that in mm-hmm. how we show up in our lives. That would just be, I don't know, something about that for me. It feels a little scary, but it also feels liberating. Like what I I can just be me and just put me out without that feels like oh I can't do that I can't do that because because you just have so much going on don't you about what will they think what will he say what will that you know yeah. all of these things that tie us up in knots and stop us from truly being that um, giving out that energy that we're meant to do I think it's such a powerful picture mm. isn't it of just yeah clinging on I started doing that recently like I started writing German content on LinkedIn and one person who seems to read my content a lot in English asked in German I don't know that 
person speaks German, I would say it's Google translated. Mm -hmm. um, why would I be writing in German now? And I'm like, well, for starters, I am German. <laughs> <laughs> I am That'll do it. actually German. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and uh, most of my audience on LinkedIn, I would, I would go as far as to say, like ninety percent of the people on my LinkedIn, um, of my audience is actually German. And so, when I posted my first post, it immediately got over eighteen hundred impressions, just because LinkedIn would serve now to the people who speak the same language. Mm -hmm. And I didn't actually realize before because I have in my LinkedIn settings um, that I like, I basically all my settings are English and my location is London, whatever, like everything would seem like I like I'm not German, basically, other than my surname, maybe. But um, I guess because my LinkedIn goes back many years and it has all my colleagues there from like over 10 years ago, whatever. And so it's really interesting because I have this, I don't know if you ha ever had this, but because I had a pretty, <clears throat> uh, let's say intense, but somewhat successful career in corporate and in the startup slash agency culture in Germany before I left. And I was pretty young at this time. So in very short years, I made quite a career for myself. When I talk about this now, this can sound like I make stories up, kind of. It's it's almost like, um, because first of all, it's a long time ago, but also because uh, sometimes it it feels weird to talk about things knowing that my old colleagues are going to read it and they may wonder, am I going to talk about them? <laughs> am I going to talk about, you know, um, because I'm not talking about specific uh, projects or whatever. I talk about my experiences and most of the ex experiences I had in any and all of those jobs. And I had a lot of jobs because I started when I uh, started working when I was 13. And so in those 13 years of working in Germany, I obviously collected a lot of experience in both ways, right? Like work experience, but also as an autistic person in the workforce. Anyways, but sometimes it feels like talking about those experiences as if like kind of imposter-like. I talk about all of this and then because now I have this audience that a lot of them are from the time when I experienced it and they have no freaking idea how I experienced this because all of the reasoning and all of the understanding of my experiences came basically seven years later or six years later right or for some even 15 years later so I don't know if you ever had this feeling of these completely uh hypocritical like it's it's as if I had two things going on at the same time I'm talking about it I know it's real I know it happened I know this is what my experience was on the other hand I feel like I'm talking about a movie and I'm not I'm not sure I'm saying the real thing and I'm always afraid that someone's going to call me out like hell you know yeah I, I think I think people like us experience this quite a lot Monique because mm. we're constantly doing the work we're constantly doing the work on self. We're constantly changing and evolving. And you are a completely different person. Everybody, you are completely different every seven years. Every cell in your body is different yeah. in seven years. So that, again, cause, cause and effect, that change in the physical, why wouldn't that change mentally, emotionally, energetically, mm. spiritually? Because you're changing, you're evolving and growing. So you're seeing now those scenarios and those events that happened back then with your eyes today and mm -hmm. so i think i i experience it a lot too because i i mean i look back i built an that e-commerce business that i built to uh, four million pounds like six million dollars in revenue annual revenue it's like quite a feat right it's like well that's a good thing that business went bust in 2013 so we're talking almost coming up for 11 years now. And so when I yeah. talk about that experience, 
it's still imprinted on me energetically and emotionally, the trauma, the grief, all of that stuff. But it, but it does feel a bit like I'm describing a film or a book or a story. It, you know, it's mm. hard. I can still feel the emotion of what I went through going through that failure. Failure. There's another podcast episode, Monique. Label of failure. Let's write it down. Um, the but but it, I do feel detached, like I'm describing something mm. that happened to somebody else. So I think I think that's always the case, isn't it? When we go back, you know, if we were to ask you to, to describe something that happened yesterday or this morning, it would be different. But uh, but yeah, I don't know, I think, honestly. No. Sometimes I have no. Sometimes I have this same thing with something that happened yesterday. <laughs> Not always, <laughs> but. It depends because I don't know if that's somehow a disconnect in my brain or something, but it's sometimes it feels like what I experience and oh, how do I describe that? <laughs> I'm trying to find the words. Um, it's almost as if I would change realities between two days. Oh, oh, like, I can't even, I can't even describe it. So question, it's, question it's so for weird. you about yeah. that. Is it, is mm -hmm. it kind of like, you know, we talk about witness consciousness and being in that place of the observer, observer. So you're not like swept in it. Is it like you're watching it? Is it like you're seeing it from a different perspective or something different? not when it happens i guess there are when you, times when you're though, looking back you're seeing it like from the sidelines almost well i think then i'm removed one more um decree so mm. i'm i'm the one who's the observer of the observer Does it make sense? It does. Yeah, it does. Because I think, well, that's, we talk a lot, don't we, about awareness, right? Mm. The, the reality is most of us go through, and we all do it, no matter how much work we do. There's areas of our life where we go, we don't know that we don't know. We just don't know that we don't know. We have unconscious imprinting and beliefs and conditioning that just causes us to do actions that are resultant of things that have happened to us through our our life experience right whether we realize it or not and that's the key the awareness of i think the awareness of the thing is what we're talking about here it's the awareness awareness from a different awareness firstly and then mm. awareness from a different perspective to how how we were when we first seen it and i think that this is a skill this is a skill that we don't teach people we don't teach we don't get taught it in school but the ability to see things from a different perspective, even things that we're experiencing as a self, what we call self, that that really that's what we talk about by conscious awareness, isn't it? It's the ability to see. Yeah. Oh, you know, I um, I'm I'm eating that chocolate cake, and I don't, you know, I I know that I shouldn't do that because I need to lose a little bit of weight, but I'm still doing it. Why are the you calling me out like this, Colin? <laughs> Look, I struggle. I've struggled with my weight all my life. That's an area that, that's a dark area for me that I need to examine, right? Because I will literally, I like, I'll, I'll feel a bit fat, and I'll be like, oh, but I'll still have that Snickers bar. I'll still have that thing, you know. And like, oh, screw it. Um, but it, it, Bob Proctor talks about this. He calls it the knowing doing gap. Like we know what we should be doing, and yet we do something completely different. And then, and this is where we talk about the levels of awareness, isn't it? Because you're able to then change. If you want to, you're able to change actively that behavior from a place of awareness. If you don't know, if you, if you, if you don't know any of this, you're just going to keep reaching into that fridge for that cake, aren't you? Completely oblivious. Yeah, but I'm not sure if awareness in that moment would help. Because you, you just set yourself, and I just did it today. <laughs> I I have to get rid of gluten again. But, but there was this uh, white chocolate cookie, and it was like, 
it was vegan yeah so because i have to get rid of gluten and dairy and um peanuts and a few other things because i'm intolerant and i haven't done all of these things in a few months because of all of this moving and now I can feel it like it's at the point again where I'm like mm -hmm, damn it so I just have to remove it for a few months until it's like completely remove it and again so this cookie they ticked most of the boxes but not the gluten box and I was like well you know three out of four <laughs> yeah and you know, and, and just enough. to add a, add a little bit of weight to your argument there it would be a shame to waste it <laughs> well i bought it i should have not bought it oh well so, there we go <laughs> so that's so the then work, is, working it back work it back that's the thing isn't it work it back to that point <laughs> but the thing is well i i went through this whole awareness thing while i had it in my hand before mm. i bought it i mm. like i was literally making the conscious decision i'm gonna have this shitty gluten today because i don't care but why didn't i care and so that's the point the point is i think not because it's not that we are not aware i think what happens is that we are probably either not aware of the long-term effects or we are putting the short-term gratification over the long-term effects and results and because the short-term gratification in this moment is bigger than the long-term effects or results that we can't see yet. Like say I get like really bad health issues once again. <laughs> and like, because I can't see it basically in this moment and our brain doesn't have a pain memory, then our brain is going to be like, can't be that bad. So I'm going to take the fucking cookie. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the problem. I don't think the problem is that we're not aware. Mm. I think it's one step further. And when you talk about it, like the different perspectives and the observer of the observer, I think what's really going on with me, like with these different things from my past is when you mentioned that every seven years, our cells are completely renewed and everything. It's because of that. I think what happens is, is I'm such a completely different person from who I was say when I was like 17 like my life at 17 I think I told you a little bit about it right like I worked yep. in the red light yep. district and stuff but Colin if you knew a hundred percent of what I was doing that if you like you would not I kid you not you would not believe it you would just not like you would never believe that the one today was that person back in when I was 17 and the thing is I can't believe it either. Like I can't, and I think it's the, like when I look back and maybe that's a thing I have to practice it more, like acknowledge how far I've come, but it's so far, it's so far that looking back, I sometimes can't see myself anymore. Does that make sense? I can't see that 17 year old anymore that did all of these things and that had this trauma response and didn't even realize and was in complete denial and like all of these things. And like, I just thought I was really cool and I was really confident and I took my power back and what the fuck I was like this super, uh, I don't know what I was doing there. But I think that's why it feels like a movie for me because I feel like I'm looking at a character. I'm looking at a character and probably I was a character at this point because I'm just now really becoming my true self again and remembering who I actually was born to be because I'm unmasking, I'm being more authentic, I'm being autistic because I was always autistic, but did I act like this? No, because I couldn't. And all of these things, you know, and I think that's really it. I'm looking at it from the third, like third perspective observer, observing myself in that moment, looking at this character I was. And I think that's why it feels so unreal. So, and because also it's again, the distances I've gone to heal and to progress and self-improvement, all of that, I'm, I'm in it, for, I'm 37 and I'm in it since I was 13 years old. And I think I've come so far that sometimes I don't realize how far it is because I can't look back that far anymore, if that makes sense, you know? And so I hope that was a complete 
sentence. Yeah. Well, Paragraph. You know, so to, <laughs> um, I've just got white chocolate cookies on my mind right now, Monique. I'm not going to lie. But then <laughs> two two things came to mind when you shared there. One of them was the um, the gratitude. <laughs> white chocolate, aside from white chocolate cookies, three okay. things on my mind. Number one, white <laughs> chocolate cookies. Number two, the gratitude for the journey that you've been on and how far uh -huh. you've come in since mm -hmm. that 17 year old self in the red light district to who you are today. That's like sense of the sense of gratitude for that. Think about that for a moment. Like if we lean into the energy, we've spoke about energy and how it, how the vibration affects like the law of um, attraction, yeah. all of the things that we spoke about. If we lean into the energy of vibration and now we put gra the, sorry, the energy of gratitude, the vibration, the energy of gratitude, and we put gratitude energy out into the world, that's us dropping that pebble of gratitude mm, and they're yeah, yeah. the ripple effects that we'll create in the world aren't they so it's like a it's like a it's like a powerful it's a powerful gift that we've all got if we're only aware of it so just like that oh man like rather than going I, that i don't even know that 17 year old me like who are mm. they they're just some alien human being that is just not there's no way that was me that, that then right and and we, i have the same thing i look at th things i did decisions i made and i'd be like I would literally go, hey, you're an idiot, lad. Why are you doing that? You know, <laughs> there's no way I would show up in the way that I did then. Now, no way, no way. And then, and then this, the third thing, aside from the cookie and the gratitude, is the concept of spiral dynamics. So, yes. uh, one of the ideas that that's what I thought of. Yeah, like yeah, like growth is this. Imagine a passageway up a like a a, a conical mountain that you would draw in school, like a a, a yep. typical mountain. And we make a progress up the mountain and we see the same village down below, but then we travel around the mountain, we go up, we go down, and then we see the same village again. And we think, oh shit, we're in the set. We've not moved. We haven't mm. grown. We haven't changed, but actually we're seeing the same thing from a different perspective because we've gone up the mountain a few hundred feet. We just come back yeah. around to what looks to be the same place. And that's this, this concept of spiral dynamics of how we actually our, our growth as human beings being this upward spiral, not always upwards, right? But a spiral nevertheless. And I think there's both of those things at play with that, that mm -hmm. literally I, is this, this is, this is what gets me excited about our conversations for one. And also gets me excited about life because it's like, <laughs> I literally have to hold myself back from being giddy like a kid, right? Because knowing that, you meet so Colin, you're telling me all I have to do, all we have to do right now is lean into the energy of gratitude and good things will come back to us. That might hit yeah. us in the back of the head, but that's all yeah. that's all <laughs> I have to do. Like literally, yeah. that's it. If you go through life like that, good mm -hmm. things will come back. That's yeah, like definitely. it feel feels like a cheat code, Monique, doesn't it? Feels like a cheat code. That's it, right? How can it be that simple? You know? How can it be that simple? And yet. In its essence, it is because yeah. everything is energy. Everything's mm -hmm. in movement. And, and, and this, you know, it's, it's no more difficult than that. We, we are the thing that's either doing this and stopping it. Good stuff coming into our lives or we're holding on. I've just got that vision of that deer in my mind now or holding on and not letting our good things go out like that gratitude energy go out. It's like, it doesn't get any simpler than that really, does it? in its essence yeah. oh if only if only i could realize this in the moments when i'm going <laughs> you know if you could realize it in all moments in life because it's like we have this little oh shit yeah yeah mm. and then you go on and life gets in the way and things happen and it's like whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> do you find that like you just you just it's different <laughs> you know it's interesting because i feel like i have this thing where I do remember this a lot, but it's hard to believe in those moments. Mm. Like when you have a real, like, I guess when, when you have like short term distress, I would say it's easier for me to just know this too shall pass. I know this is like probably yeah. the most cliche thing to say, but it is really true. Right. But uh for me the last three and a half years you know how difficult they were you've been there basically 
And I think it was at some point, at least to the people closest to me, which are not a lot, <laughs> I think you could see that after a while I was somewhat deteriorating into more of a pessimistic, I don't know, I don't know how to get out of it. I don't know, like more of a stuck in the tunnel than seeing the light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing. But I'm usually a seeing the light at the end of the tunnel thing. And I think I've seen the light for at least like two years. But then I was like, I, pff, I followed the fucking light and I got fucking nowhere. And and then I kind of, I think I kind of gave, no, I didn't gave up. I was just like tired of trying everything, I guess, and burned out. <laughs> And so um, I think that's a thing, like in those moments where like, you know, where you have like uh, traffic rage or like, I don't know, where, like those short moments, that's fairly easy for me to remember. I'm not sitting there and be like, this too shall pass. But, you know, if you think in bigger schemes, like, is it going to matter in fucking five years? Is it going to like... And I think I'm lucky because I've died twice. <laughs> Sounds funny. But because then it, shit like this doesn't really matter anymore. Of course, I also get angry when people cut me off and almost freaking kill me in my car or in the motorcycle here, right? Um, because it's dangerous. My dog is in the car. I, like, if I have to die, then please let my dog stay alive kind of thing. Mm. But um, Or maybe not. Anyways, so it's a whole different other episode uh, yeah, we definitely should talk about that because that concept of putting things into perspective, because it is about perspective, mm. isn't it? And the fact yeah. that you've literally physically died twice. Yeah. I know um, we had a health scare in our family and it, it just brought life into perspective. It put a, a focus on things, a different focus, like none of that nonsense matters. This is what matters. Yeah. And it helps you to refocus sometimes those things. So yeah, I'd be curious for another episode um come out of this but essentially just exploring that perspective of yeah. the reality because when something happens traumatic to us for that in that moment and in the aftermath of that moment we're very focused aren't we that yeah. health scare for example we were very focused for a short time after that but then it just like it dulls down and it goes away a little bit so i'd be curious yeah. to explore with you like is this a, a real and present thing constantly for you or does it still does it even dwindle after going through something as extreme as that? Yeah. Do you want to know yeah. now or do you want to go, like, I think we should do an episode on that. I think we should definitely do an episode on that because that yeah. I'm genuinely curious to understand that because yeah. if the real look, the reason I bring it up Monique is because like, I just went into that place of energy. You could probably feel it. I went into the energy of yeah. gratitude before and I, I was literally like, I was stuffing myself laughing. And, yeah. um, so, so if, if it's that easy, why can't we always do it? Why can't we do it in those moments? And I do believe it's down to the perspective, isn't it? If we, if we're able to, uh, able to just shift, shift that perspective, it's easier said than done, isn't it? it yeah. And I done. tell you why it's the negativity bias in our brain, because just our brain about focuses 20 times more on negative things than on positive so we have to work 20 times as much to focus on something positive than on something negative so you sit in the car someone cuts you off and you'll complain like for this is one of my pet hates now you know that don't you the road rage <laughs> i know that's why i bring it up all the time <laughs> so you'll complain for like 20 minutes right Mm -hmm. But you'll not mention even once that on the next traffic junction, that other guy would stop for you and let you go mm -hmm. because you were the one who would have cut them off. And so your brain is, and that is a survival mode. It's a survival mode, but it's so deeply ingrained. And there were studies about it and all of these kind of scientific research. And they figured it's about 20 times. So basically... If we go, for example, with money, you would rather lose a uh, hundred dollars than to 
wait, I need to do the mask. That is so wait a second. <laughs> you would rather um you would rather <laughs> Okay, that's it. Let me not do this right now in the podcast because I put myself on the spot and now it doesn't work out and this is gonna go really wrong. Yeah, so, but I, I know what you mean. The 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 fear so, of loss outweighs the fear of gain the the opportunity of gain doesn't it in our brain yes. and I, I know yes. i understand the neuroscience behind that and it's so, exactly but that right that has to do with the negativity yeah. bias too yes so basically you will remember so let's just say if you would win 200 pounds or euros or dollars 200 money sure. whatever currency 200 pounds uh, you would win 200 pounds but you lost 10 pounds you would complain and talk about losing this 10 pounds more than you'd mention winning this 200. And that's because of the negativity bias in your brain, focusing yes. so much on the loss versus the win. Yes. So we're, we're really focused on not losing what we've already got, aren't we? Essentially, we're wired to not, to not let go of those things that we've got. I know in, mm -hmm. in, um, in marketing, which is my area, right? The whole idea of the um, the sense of the the taking something away is more powerful as a trigger of behavior than adding something different, like adding the the potential of something. So think about a neat, really easy example. Think about these game shows where they go and it's like they ask the question and they they get a hundred pound and then it's like right, you've got that hundred pound now. You can either walk away with the hundred pound or you can gamble it with a chance to win a thousand pound. But if you lose, you lose everything. Right. And so there's yeah. then that pull, that pull then if it's a game show, you might not care and you just go, yeah, let's go for it. But, but there'll be a point where you'll want to cling on to what you've got more than that's the, that's the stronger pull essentially is what we're saying, isn't it? Yeah. The pull to hold on to what we've got. And that's the same with change, right? So mm. that's why it's so difficult for people to change because as long as the pain of being in this place where you're at right now is perceived, not actually perceived, smaller than the change you would have to go through, then you will not change. Like the pain of the change, basically. So if the pain of staying in the same place is perceived smaller than the pain of the change you will have to go through to get to a better place. People will not change. And that's because they'd rather stay in the same shitty place instead of losing something they already had and not knowing if the new thing is gonna working out basically, right? And then having to go through all of this pain because it will be painful first before they get the reward and in this time they lose what they already had and so they don't want to give something up that is kind of good enough in the moment somewhat even though they don't like it at all and they complain every fucking day about it and they actually want to get rid of it but because they don't know if they get to the new place and the pain for going there is so big perceived by the way they're going to just not do it yeah. We're also conditioned to this, aren't we? Because it, yeah. as you were sharing that sayings came into my head, better the devil, you know, you know, yeah. like there's all this, like that you, you, you're just told all of the, you, you, you're imprinted, you're programmed with all of this essentially bullshit, really, aren't you? You've, you're yeah. imprinted with all of this stuff that's accepted as common wisdom, better the devil, you know, Oh, don't do that, you know? And, that, and so that, that just, it's so hard to get out of that, isn't it? Yeah. Again, this is the thing. It's like one of the most important realizations in my journey, Monique, I don't know about you, was just this sense of like of self-love and acceptance and being like, well, I'm not broken. It's just the way humans are wired. It's the way that we are mm -hmm. created. And, if, you know, the way that we've we've come in, come to being is that it's our nature because of conditioning, of beliefs, of upbringing and experiences and because of the way that we exist consciously i've got this picture of the iceberg in my mind right the conscious five percent the unconscious 95 percent that sits below the water 
it's just the nature of things. So it's like, Colin, you're okay. I love you. You're okay. Like that, like starting yeah. with that. I don't know. Something about that just helps me to kind of go, well, yeah, that's just the way it is. Right. I'm mm. programmed by this or by that and by society telling me this. And um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's like the starting point to being able to make that, have the courage to make that change, even though it can be difficult. Yeah. 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 But, you know, if you bring it back to the law of cause and effect, then imagine you keep holding on just like that deer. You keep holding on to the things you keep complaining about that you don't like, that you really want to change, that are so painful, just because you don't want to go through the pain of changing. Then what do you get? You get more of what you're holding on to, right? And you are causing a ripple effect of all of the things that you actually don't want because you can't let go of it and you can't have the courage or you don't have the courage or you, you don't want to have the courage, I don't know, to go through that pain to get to a better place. I think that's where a lot of people um, kind of miss out on creating a better life for themselves because I cannot tell you how often I have reset my complete life sometimes out of nowhere and I don't think it's ever been really out of nowhere I think it was always coming like a like a thunderstorm and then at some point it's just like unloaded but um I cannot count it anymore I can't count it anymore and people keep saying like you're crazy why do you change all of the like why can you not be satisfied and it's not about not being satisfied it's about if there's a version of me that can be better and more at peace and more uh more helpful and on purpose for the collective and for good but mostly better for myself then I have to I feel like I have to make the change to be that person I can't just hang around and be like nah, maybe next time like there's not gonna be a fucking next time how do I know where I'm going to end up? Like what planet I'm going to end up next time? What dimension I'm going to be reborn? And am I going to even be reborn? I Like I went through so many freaking lifetimes. Maybe I'm done soon. Like who knows? <laughs> and <laughs> am I going to... I kid you not, Colin. Like it's, it's also getting tiring. Like my soul's being a little exhausted <laughs> from all of this. Like doing it again. But you know what I mean? It's like how do I know? So I need to do everything I can. And if that means I'm going to move through the freaking world, I'm going to be here and there and everywhere. And I'm going to do everything I can. And if I have to start the reset, but uh, push the reset button every now and then, then so be it. You know? This is where I think I, your, your experience, your life and death experiences give you the, the, um, I don't know. Advantage. The, yeah. The, the advantage in a sense, because you, you just go, nah, screw this. Yeah. You know, you do. Yeah. M most people, they have to have that shake up, don't they? The loss of a loved one or the redundancy or the yeah. failure of a business. You know, they have to have something that triggers, like there's no other choice but to go through, you know. Um, but I still have enough shake ups, Colin. It's not like I have. No, no. I, yeah, I know that. But I'm, what I'm saying is you, you've got that, you've got that, like, you've got that little step ahead, it feels like. Yeah. You know? Because... I think what, what it is, is I have this constant reminder where it can end up. Mm. Like, not only with this dying, but the amount of trauma I have because I didn't always listen to the smaller ringing in the back. The times I ignored the universe calling on me and be like, Monique, please, can you change? And I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm going to do it my way. And then I've been... I mean, slept, left, right, punched in the face, um, rolled down the hill. Like, remember that <laughs> that reel I sent you? <laughs> Just like hanging on to the freaking Rodeo unicorn and being like thrown off. Just yeah, that a, is me. A beautiful video. I beautiful video let me just explain it was a beautiful video of a young girl on a rodeo horse uh, like a mechanical rodeo horse booking back and forth and she for the life of her she wasn't for letting go was she she was being flung around like a rag doll and she was just clinging and clinging and clinging 
So I think it was a beautiful picture of how we we just hold on to that one, don't we, Monique? Yeah. Awesome. And she was literally just holding on to the hair of the horse, right? And she was like, <laughs> how old? She was maybe like four or five years old. Yeah. Like the legs not even long enough to go down to the belly <laughs> of the horse to even put breath on it. Like she was just being thrown around. Colin, this is literally... That is the video of my life that is telling the story because <laughs> I I have to I have to be honest I do sometimes not what's the word listen I do not listen when the universe calls me be like hey time to move on or like you should listen to that like and then I get I get the receipt very clearly I get really strong receipts you know so it's it, cause and effect mm. <laughs> mm. i'm holding on and i get the bump the boomerang coming right back at me i'm not being only like i'm not getting it back at the head i'm getting it left right in my face just right on <laughs> it's not <laughs> even funny <laughs> uh, but i think so i think if we can both of the two of those things there the the stop hand stopping it mm -hmm. coming back like being you know, being receptive to it coming back wherever yeah. that may be however that might look from whatever angle it might come in and it might mm -hmm. not even be directly related to the thing that we've put out that's just the nature of how this existence yeah. works right and then also the on the flip side the, the the actual putting it out something you mentioned earlier then was about the like if you're holding on and we're holding on to this negativity the wand yeah, with, with whether your you... own energy, like even if it's a good energy, if you're not willing to give it, yeah, you you also can't receive good energy, you, right? Exactly. And so if you're holding on to the negativity, that's actually, you, you, you're you still putting that out. You're always emanating. You're always putting stuff yeah. out, but you're putting out the negativity, which is what you shared when you said about, you know, that's why they, these things then pile up because what you're putting out is what you get back. It's just the nature of this existence, isn't it? So we yeah. have to be aware that in our holding on, we're actually doing ourselves even more harm than we realize because that negative stuff is then going out into the as a ripple into the world, just as much as the positive stuff. Right. You know? And isn't so. it basically like, what's the saying? Um, being angry at someone or resenting someone is like drinking poison and trying, uh, hoping that the other person would die. Isn't it the same? Oh, I love that saying. I love that saying. Yeah. Have you never heard yeah. it? I have heard it, but I've oh, not okay. heard it for years. So it's just reminded yeah. me of it. That's so yeah, true, because, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's basically if you hold on, like, let's say you're holding on to crutches or you're holding mm. on to like old stories, someone has done something, blah, blah, and you keep repeating them or whatever. That's the same thing. If you hold on to that, not only is it going to ripple out into the world and how you interact with others but it's gonna basically poison yourself because you're always gonna resent that not only that person but the people around you're probably gonna be not trustful with others you, you're just gonna you know and that's has a ripple effect as well mm, i love that so drinking poison expecting it to kill somebody else it's like that's yeah. awesome that's beautiful because that's what we do isn't it by clinging on that's exactly what we do yeah so we need to just not drink that poison and just let that go that's actually one thing i'm pretty really good at to be honest like that's that's where i mastered letting go i not holding i'm not it letting in. go on the unicorn horse that i'm riding the rodeo thing like if it's yeah. my life i'm holding on for freaking dear life until the universe throwing me off but with other people i kid you not colin i have you know that i had some of the worst traumas that you can tick off the box basically right and every single time i have not often if at all gotten any justice from the system around me, like even if I reported to the police, even if I done that, blah, blah, whatever. And um, because this world is just not made for justice. Like, I think that's a whole different episode. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna, I'm sending you a message all, all the time. If you have not. <laughs> we got a list of episodes as long as I'm our like, arm, right? <laughs> episode, is there any justice? Is there justice in the world? <laughs> um anyways in the world <laughs> and uh basically what happens is i have to think that i realized pretty early in my life that i'm i personally believe actually that i am 
truly a good person at heart. Doesn't mean I haven't hurt anyone. Doesn't mean sometimes I have probably good intentions that hit pretty difficult or like they have a negative impact because intention and impact is also not the same. Oh my God, how many episodes? Another episode, have? intention <laughs> and impact. There we go. And um, <laughs> intention is not impact. And <laughs> my goodness. What I'm trying to say is I have decided very early in my life that I'm going to give it to karma and karma can do whatever the fuck they want with people. And I kid you not, Colin, I got the receipts, not for every person, but sometimes 10 years later, I got the literal receipts in forms of newspaper articles or whatever people who have um abused me who have harassed me who have stolen money from me and then suddenly got into illegal businesses and then were taken off by the police and had to pay a million per person to get them out of prison I'm like <laughs> look at you karma I love that <laughs> it's a bitch when you're on the wrong side isn't it <laughs> <laughs> well that's a good example of not drinking the poison isn't yeah, it of just letting exactly. it go Letting it go. Because also, if you understand, and that's when you when we come back to your thingy, um, with the circles of control, mm. I cannot control it. I can't like the unless I want to be the one who's now doing something illegal, morally unethical, and wanna uh, un align from one. I would never do. And I like, what am I gonna do? am I going to go and now report it to like five police? Like, what am I going to do? I'm going to just ruin my energy. I'm going to ruin my um, life with this by holding on. So I'm going to give it to karma. And it has so far, every single time in my life, paid off 10x, if not more. And knowing this makes it so easy to just, um, you know, give the poison to someone else and yeah. let them. Do the that's, work. A, that's a beautiful real life example of how you've put it into practice. And I think we talked about the difficulty of putting it into practice in different scenarios, mm. haven't we? And I think we, one of the things I've been examining in, in my, in my life, my experience is looking at those things that I'm really good at and then seeing how I can then take those really good things to the places where I'm not so good, like reaching for that Snickers bar or that white chocolate, right. white chocolate cookies, Monique, I'm going to have to go and get <laughs> Um, you know, like <laughs> seeing how and where you can take that. Cause we all, you know, we're all multifaceted beings. We all have things that we're great at things that we're not so great at. And there's always work to be done, isn't there? And I think yeah. the, 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 the understanding and appreciation is that precursor to looking at how and where. So I think you being able to let that go, give it to karma. That's a beautiful example of how we should be in all areas. So like looking at, well, actually when I'm driving the car, I'm not that like, wh how yeah. can we apply that in all areas like that? Right. And also if we're looking at it now, really literally in the cause and effect law, I like, if I was going to try to do it myself, I would stand in the way of the law to lawing and doing it's law thing because they caused something. They done something wrong. So the effect is going to come back at them anyways. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to stand in a way, it's just going to take longer or it has to take reroutes and whatever. So if I'm going to step out and basically give it to karma or however you want to call it, let it go as a random whatever, then it can just come around back faster, right? It's just going to come back around and hit you right in the face and i'm gonna sit here and i'm good because you cost that thing yourself <laughs> and i'm just gonna sit here and be like ah, i'm not what a, sorry what a beautiful beautiful way to be and i think just like looking at that superpower that is the ability to do that to let that go to not allow you know to not worry about how things are coming or you're in your input or your influence over those things that are none of your business, like that essence on focusing on that circle of control, those things that you can change. That's where the power is, isn't it? Us, our yeah. ability to not stop good things coming in, 
and equally to not stop good things going out by holding on and doing this and holding one hand up and one hand the other way, like the card. Right. And I think that's the, that's the key in all of this. That really is the superpower of the law of cause and effect, whether we like it or not, everything we do, every way that we show up goes out into the world and it causes those ripples, good, bad, ugly, everything in between, like it or not, it's a fact of life. And when you appreciate the fact you be you begin to be able to take steps like you did, Monique, in allowing yourself to play with the law, play with the law, like play within the law, control what you can control, have fun with like letting it go and seeing those receipts come back. They might hit you on the back of the head like we talked about, but what you put out always comes back. Every action has a reaction or a consequence that essentially is the universal law of cause of cause and effect so if we appreciate that and we understand it we can begin to experiment with playing with it in our lives and seeing how the way that we show up affects the way that those around us show up and the way that our circumstances and life unfolds it's such a beautiful power when we appreciate it it is magnificent so our encouragement to you is to just play with this law of how it how it shows up for you what it what it means for you and how you can have that very same experiment in your life to see how not drinking the poison has makes all of the difference to you which then makes all of the difference to your life it's magnificent that's our invitation to you to go play with that Next week, we will be talking about the law of compensation, which again, I mean, every one of these laws, Monique, has me bouncing in my seat just to, oh, can we not do it sooner than next week? Do we have to wait a whole <laughs> week? Uh, as well as the big list of, of episodes, ideas that we get every time we chat. So another magnificent conversation. Uh, thank you so much, Monique. Excited for our law of compensation chat next week. See you next time. Me too. See you next week. Thank you for joining us on the Paradox of Life. We are Monique and Colin, guiding you on the journey to discover your truth. If you enjoyed this podcast, please review, subscribe, and share it with someone who needs to hear it. Let's embrace this journey together, investigating norms, challenging our perceptions, and questioning everything. Remember... Asking tough questions is how we find real answers. It's how we get to know ourselves and connect with others. Stay curious. Keep questioning. And together, let's uncover the truth that make life worth living.